Hi, I'm Matt. I work at Infinity QS, and I'll be taking you through this brief introduction of Proficient, the world's most popular SPC software. The top manufacturers around the world choose Proficient in large part because it's been designed to provide an intuitive, easy to understand interface, even in very different environments. With Proficient, it's simple to see everything that you need, but nothing that you don't. Now today I'll be going through a basic Proficient project, but keep in mind that the projects our customers use are as diverse as our customers themselves. So let's get started. This project is what I'd like to call a shop floor project, since it's been streamlined for use on the shop floor. Initially, you might notice a few things missing, such as the menu and ribbon bars that are standard in most Windows applications. Additionally, in this case, I've even hidden the Windows taskbar. In fact, the only buttons available are these seven buttons along the bottom of my project, which we call toolbar buttons. Now, using these toolbar buttons, I can do things like pull up my product drawing. This happens to be a bitmap picture located somewhere on my network. You'll notice that Infinity actually launched a separate program to view this picture, which means I can launch any type of file that I need, such as this SOP, because Proficient simply passes the file into the native application, in this case, Acrobat Reader. Using similar techniques, I could launch more elaborate files, like AutoCAD drawings, solid work drawings, or even videos, like this one here. Even in environments that might need access to numerous files, Proficient's toolbars, which can accommodate menus, can still make finding that information a breeze. So by using toolbar buttons, it's easy to access files on my own computer or across the network. All of the information I need is available instantly, all in one place, with a simple click of the mouse. Another benefit of using toolbars to access remote files is that I'll never get obsolete drawings or videos. They'll always be up to date. Now let's get back to our project and examine the charts. In Proficient, measurement data can be viewed and analyzed using a variety of charts. In my shop floor project here, I'm using the multi-chart view. I can see four charts showing control charts for my three characteristics, as well as a summary box and whisker chart. Since all of this information is displayed within a single screen, there's no need for me to click around to see everything. I get it all with simply a glance. This simplified layout works great on shop floors that measure a handful of features. If I happen to measure more than just a handful of characteristics, or if my operators simply need to have access to other charts, I can utilize a single chart view project like you see here. The interface remains simplified, with the key difference being that each chart is full screen, and I have access to these new chart buttons along the left side of my project. Simply clicking any of these new buttons brings that particular chart in focus. Throughout the software, you've probably noticed the use of colors to bring attention to certain items. For example, these red cells here indicate that values have fallen outside of my specification limits. The yellow cells highlight values that are fairly close to my specification limits, but still acceptable. Additionally, the control chart backgrounds that we've seen also utilize colors to highlight out-of-control conditions that I need to be aware of. On a control chart, if I simply click and hold the mouse for a second, I'll get this pop-up dialog showing the raw data values, as well as any additional information that might be tagged to this data, like the employee. This additional information allows me to easily slice and dice the data to analyze in a multitude of ways. So far, we've seen many different ways to access existing information, such as external drawings, documents, videos, or even the subgroup data we just saw on our charts. But now, I want to show you how easy it is to collect new data. And to do this, I'll be using this caliper, to measure my blue part, which I have here. So, let's get started. As you probably guessed, to add data, I start by clicking this big green plus button in the toolbar. Now I have this project configured to ask a few questions before I collect the measurement data. The large buttons and fonts work well on the shop floor, and by clicking this button, I can even get an on-screen keyboard, which works great with touchscreen computers. In this case, I'll go ahead and select a lot number and a crew. I'll be crew two. Now this is the actual data collection window. In this window, you see a lot of useful information that's critical for operators. For example, down here, we have all of the items I just selected. Over here, I have an actual picture of the part that's embedded right inside this window. This picture is great because it shows me exactly where I'm supposed to be measuring this part. Now above this picture, we have the specification limits. We can see the target value in addition to the upper and lower limits. Now I'm going to use the keyboard to type in a few values to show you how Proficient provides real-time feedback about data values as they're being entered. 
So if I put in a data value that's good, Proficient immediately shows a green bar. It's good. It's in spec. If I enter a value that's close to the specification limits, I'll get a yellow bar. That's a warning. Eh, you're getting close. If I enter a value that is indeed out of spec, I'll get a red bar. So again, Proficient is very easy to understand by making things very visual. Now, let me measure the outside diameter of my actual part. There you go. The data from the gauge just pops right in when I press this Send Data button that's on my caliper. But what happens if I accidentally press the button as I pick up the gauge? Well, let me try that. If I send a value from my gauge that is unreasonable, Proficient recognizes this, alerts me with this very subtle red window, and ignores the data value. This is yet another example of how Proficient works to make it easy to use in a shop floor environment, even anticipating and correcting typical operator mistakes. Now I'll continue measuring my parts. You'll notice that once I've measured the OD location A on all three of my parts, Proficient updates the data entry window to indicate now that OD location B is my next characteristic. Additionally, you'll see the specification limits have changed. And finally, the picture is now showing me where OD location B is on my part. After I measure this value, the data entry now is requesting OD location C. So initially, I measured all of my OD location A for all three of my parts, and now for each part I'm measuring B and then C, demonstrating again how Proficient adapts to the way that I need to work, not the other way around. When I enter the last value, Proficient automatically saves everything, and in this case alerts me to an SPC alarm. This <laughs> full screen red window certainly makes this hard to miss. Now this window actually lets me know information about the particular event while simultaneously sending out any email notifications that I might have configured in my system. Anyone with an email address can receive these notifications, whether it's on a computer, pager, or even their cell phone. They do not need Proficient in order to receive these emails. Finally, down below, you can see that Provision is asking me, actually not asking, it's forcing me to put in an assignable cause and corrective action for this particular event. Now your system might not be set up to force this information, but it is an option that can be enabled. When I click OK, I get this window that allows me to put in the required cause and action information. You might also notice that my control chart in the upper left has changed to a red background. This lets me and anyone else in the system know that something unusual has happened. Now, if I decide to simply cancel this event window and not put in the required information, Proficient will lock me out from any more data collection until I specify what happened and what I did about it. Since I'm operating a lathe here, when I click on my cause button, Proficient limits my selection to only codes that are relevant to lathes. This simplifies things by automatically filtering the hundreds of codes in my system and only showing me the relevant choices for what I'm doing right now. So as I select my assignable cause, you'll notice this date and time stamp. And additionally, just like with the raw subgroup data, my name is stamped to this event and the cause code, so there's no way for me to hide. Okay, now let's put in the corrective action. You'll notice that provision again is automatically filtering my corrective action list because now it knows that the fixture has moved. In this way, the system helps operators avoid selecting a completely unrelated code. Finally, if I want to, I can optionally type in my own note here to give some additional information I think might be useful. Now when I click OK, you can see the red control chart updates to display the exact cause and action codes I just selected. This provides some feedback to the upcoming shift when I leave for the day, for example, so they know that we previously had an issue with a moving fixture on this particular lathe. So that's how we measure our blue part. Now I want to show you how we can take these same techniques and apply them to our new yellow shaft, which I have here. In manufacturing, it's very common to make many similar product codes like we have here. So I want to show you how Proficient makes it easy to apply everything that we've already done and use it for our new yellow shaft. So let's see how it's done. Okay, since I'm finished producing blue part, changing the product code in my project is literally just a button click away. By clicking my part toolbar button, Proficient allows me to select from all the product codes that are available to me. There are many product codes in my entire SPC system, but I'm only seeing the product codes that are available to me. Now in this case, as we saw earlier, I'm measuring yellow part, so I'll pick that as well as a lock code. Now, Proficient instantly updates all of my charts to show me the data for this new shaft. Just like we saw earlier, the events for my yellow part appear directly on these control charts, making it easy for me to understand what issues, if any, we had the last time we ran this part. 
Not only that, but my toolbar buttons, such as this drawing button I used earlier, are intelligent enough to now point to the correct information for this new part. So again, Proficient automatically keeps all the information I need right here exactly where I need it, even when I change my parts. Finally, let's assume my company produces the same parts on multiple machines to increase productivity. I can just as easily switch my process or machine in Proficient by going to my Process Toolbar button. I pick a different process, and just like before, the charts are now displaying data for Lathe 225. So, Proficient's ability to have these intelligently dynamic projects makes it easy for me as an operator to continue to use a familiar interface, even when production makes regular changes to the product or the machine I might be measuring. Now this brings an end to our introduction of Proficient. I hope that you'll agree that Proficient's ability to adapt to the way that you work makes it the easiest, most intuitive SPC software available. Thanks for watching and have a great day.